Hello and welcome to part 5 of Tales of a Translope with me, Liam Walker. So what's been happening over these last couple of weeks? Well a lot, firstly apologies for the delay, for it's meant to be a weekly thing but it's been just over two weeks, believe it or not, since your last dose, your last spoonful of Tales of a Translope. Um, I want to kick off this show by... Firstly, thank you to uh, uh, Barrow Cricket Club, Cycle Club, etc. for supporting me in this blog and for eagerly anticipating each episode. Um, I do thank you for it. Uh, guys at the Cricket Club, uh, stay strong, you never know. Uh, you might even win the league this year, uh, which would be fantastic given the circumstances and what's uh, gone on in the league structure this year. So use that as your motivation and I'll win that blooming league, guys, okay? Um, so yeah, um, I also want to talk about drivers, actually. You see all sorts, to be honest, there are a lot of good drivers on the road. Big thumbs up to you guys um, for um, kind of looking out for cyclists and and driving properly. But honestly, there are firstly, that I can only describe as the twat. Just those that just... just I don't know what goes through the head. They're certainly not Lewis Hamilton or Nico Rosberg or Jensen Button or whoever. They are just complete and utter twats on the road, to be honest. And and it's those that try and overtake five cars on the stretch of the road, on the uphill, going about 80, 90 miles an hour in a 4x4, and the cyclists on the other side of the road, and where right up against a curb with the gravel. And it's it's just, it's just absolutely insane it's not clever it's not wise just why just wait it's a 40 mile an hour road for a reason so and and those cars are going at 40 miles an hour so there's absolutely no need for it and then there's just the remarkable and bizarre you're stuck behind a car and you know they leave a gap that a Double decker bus or a tanker could, uh, could fit through, and they've got ample room on the other side of the road. It's like you could fit Albania on the left and Australia on the right and still have room for Azerbaijan. It's absolutely incredible what some people do. Um, so they leave these gaps and then they just close up the gaps as well. So this tight corner, this silly old bat, it was absolutely remarkable. So she was leaving all this space between these cars and then all of a sudden she she drives over the pavement. Drives over the pavement and then they pull in. I was I just gave them a look of of absolute like astonishment. It's almost like they had like car bipolar or something. Just absolutely no no clue what was going on, and and Cameras honestly has put his faith in people voting in an EU referendum, and what happened next was absolutely staggering. So I see this silver, this silver ellipsis on my right hand side, and it's like hang on a minute, that looks very familiar to that car I saw before, and honestly, the amount of space you given me, you could. Can hardly fit that toothbrush. It's a new toothbrush, that's why I've got. Can hardly fit that toothbrush through. She hems in right on this side. And she's got acres of room. She's got half of North Yorkshire on the right hand side. She cuts me in. I, I didn't know where to laugh, cry, do my Italian. What are you doing? That's my Italian accent. Might have to work on that one a little bit. Uh, it, Words just 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 defy you sometimes. So that's in the world of drivers. Uh and most of them are great, but you have those that just pull out and just just do all sorts. You have those that overtake you and then slow down and it's it's absolutely unbelievable. It's remarkable what goes through people's heads, it really is. But also I've had a strines, um not strines, following on from strines though, we had Tom Connolly's Guide to the Hope Valley. I'm not even gonna try and do that hashtag Tom, but it was a fantastic day. Started off a bit grey, woke up feeling good actually, woke up feeling fresh after feeling a bit fatigued and a bit tired the day before. But yeah, uh, there I was on my 130 metre climb up for this epic. So it was 
Build has 110 kilometers and two and a half thousand meters of climbing, and it was exactly that. So it was 120 kilometer ride that I did because I had to go to and from the venue. I took a slight scenic route as well, so I did a, a um, an extra climb um, as well. But it was 2,400 meters and 120 kilometers of riding. It was absolutely insanely brutal. <laughs> So the skies were a bit grey, there was a bit of light drizzle in the air, so grey as Gandalf's beard or um, David, Scof David Schofield, who, who's he? What's the presenter's name? I've com completely forgotten. Is it David? Peter Schofield. David Schofield. I don't know. I, I cannot remember his name. I've completely completely can't speak. I'm in hysterics. I'm in rapture here. Um... Yeah, so a bit grey, grey as Gandalf's beard. Yeah, it was. It wasn't funny the first time, was it? Um, so there we were. We embarked on our first climb, the epic Manchester Road, five kilometres, um, and it's about three and a half percent. It is, um, and then it was just climb after climb. So we had Winnet's Pass and Kerber, two top one hundred climbs in the country, uh, um, as well. But um, Pindale, we were just climbing and climbing and climbing seemingly. Um, we did have a nice cafe stop though. Most difficult decision I think I had, most difficult time I think I had for the whole 120 kilometres and the whole of that six hours was choosing between a bakewell tart and a slice of carrot cake. But I did get an offer, did manage to get um, carrot cake and a pot of tea for one for £4.50, but those bait were tarts look blooming good boys, and I wish I took it into one of them, but, but never mind, there's going to be no real food analogies uh, here, sorry guys, uh, I might have to save that for a special and keep you on tender hooks. Um, yeah, uh, so, so there we were, Cafe Stop, Pindale, nice climb, I managed a PB, I think, on three of these major climbs, which is ab absolutely outstanding, I mean, on when it's pass um, and now something like 120 from 9,000 people and for the whole thing um, which about 5,000 people have done on 14th so it's absolutely extraordinary I managed to keep myself going for the for the whole ride absolutely tanned it up Kerber my legs were in bits they were hurting it was actually throbbing it was it was it was a burning feeling it was like I was going through through hot coals, hot coals, you know those people that stand on hot coals and don't feel anything, I think even they would have felt this, unbelievable, um, but at, at the end of Kerber I think I just, just died a little, um, Tom, one of the riders said, is this going to be in your blog, and I just looked at him like, I'm thinking, and that's about all I could manage. I had to rush home, get some food, pizza, breakfast, um, a couple of cereal bars. I ate about 2,000 calories in about half an hour. I was absolutely ravenous. Um, but that's enough about food. Uh, so that was... That was amazing. Yes. On the subject of food, sorry, no, I'm not finished. I know that Kieran Savage absolutely loves a reference to sweet potatoes. But I want to know, does he like sweet potatoes? And do my audience here like sweet potatoes? Use the comment section below and give a thumbs up or a fun, thumbs down for sweet potato. Um, I'm certainly giving it a thumbs up. Um, good old Savo there, maybe one day, you know, we'll be partners in the Kieran well done if you got that. Sorry, I had to get that in. And on, on a cycling-related topic, actually, Michael Cayley, what are you doing? Nicking my lady. I saw your Strava post, and you said you were visiting the lady. That is notoriously my lady. Good old Miss Bauer is mine. So maybe we've got to settle this some, um, somewhere or another. Maybe we've got to do that Halden time trial to see... To see who, who, who gets the woman, um, maybe that's her way of choosing. Who knows? But now I'm only joking. But but Michael Kelly, if you fancy the Halden Town Trial at some point, um, then do it. Maybe you know if you go on my bike, I go on yours, just to even up the contest a little bit. Then I'm not going to complain. <laughs> um, 
maybe this could be a thing. Maybe this could be the next big event to follow on from Tom Tom Connery's Guide to the Hope Valley, which is T C G T H P. I've got it wrote down right there. So what else have I been up to? Yes, uh, time trial. So it's my first cycling time trial. I'm just turning into a cyclist here, really, aren't I? So first time trial, uh, 12 miles or 20k. Um, and absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. Didn't really know what to expect. Didn't know whether I was able to uh, cling on. Feeling a little bit tired during the day, but as soon as I got out on the bike and as soon as we set off for our like um, 11, 14k adventure, a uh, nice light spin out there just to loosen the legs up. I felt great. I've got absolutely no excuses either. Um, came 20th out of 45, which was which was good. I mean, it doesn't sound that great, but considering my first TT race, it was 450 meter climb in 20k of riding. It was absolutely brutal. It was insane. Just a huge drag up. Um, I was actually shouting in pain um, up the last climb, but you've got to put it all in. I didn't want to leave anything out there. I wanted to leave it all on the course, and that's what I did. So I come away with no no regrets whatsoever. Um, and if the markings are right, which I don't know whether they are, but I came fought from a road bike, and considering it's a three hundred pound B twin, uh, five hundred SE, I really, really, really can't moan. Had no air or gear or anything, so hopefully there's a bit of uh, potential there. But big thumbs up for uh, Chris Bevan for winning that. Um, hopefully, you know who who knows next year um, if I train hard, train right, um, and I get some upgraded equipment who knows maybe I can challenge him I've just laid down the gun I really haven't I don't really know what I've just let myself in for there but now it'd be great to be able to compete with such an exceptional um, talent like Chris Bevan absolutely exceptional cyclist so well done to him for winning um, but I mean to be 40 seconds off Sean Davenport who who I believe was race captain or something this year was was a huge achievement and I I'm I'm definitely proud of myself and I don't say that um, much or enough. So, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, what else have I been up to? I've been swimming the last couple of days, so that's been good. Now my injury has cleared. It doesn't look like it has. In fact, the lighting here is is about as much use as a chocolate fire guard. Uh, but, but no, I'm back in the pool. I've been able to swim, you know, um, 733 because of the length of the pool today in like 1720 or something it it would have been a little bit quicker um, if they didn't have a problem with my goggles etc so hopefully I can get that under 17 which doesn't sound that quick but it's progress Um, the first time I swam that was only about six seven weeks ago or something like that so I'm quite happy with my progress there, but I know that I'm going to have to cut that down by about four or five minutes to be competitive and to get where I want to get to, which is going to be hard. I'm going to realistically need a swimming coach. I believe I can get the swim right. I want to get the swim right because if you get uh, left behind in the swim, as it showed on Sunday with the amazing um, World Tour Series within Leeds, welcoming home the Brownlee brothers, weren't they exceptional? You know, Javier Gomez... Um, was slightly behind on the swim and didn't didn't clip in up the hill so it shows how important the transition is and it shows how important the swim is as well you know if you don't get those two right then you're really behind the eight ball and he's an exceptional runner and probably would have pushed them all the way but what an incredible event that was kind of wish i went to leeds i might even do the track next year hopefully you know um, i'll be able to don the wetsuit and and i'll be good enough to uh, do 1500 meters my my overall aim is to swim 1500 meters in about 24. I'm currently doing um, 750, you know, in in like 17, 1730. So I've got a huge, huge way to go there. I'm going to have to improve my 1500 meter time by about 12 minutes, which is absolutely monumental. But you never know. Keep persevering, and and I believe you can achieve whatever you want. Um, you know what I've achieved so far. I never thought I would. Uh, so yeah, thank you to the triathlon club. Um, I know a lot of the people are going home for summer, uh, so it'd be quite lonely training. But um, certainly, um, I'm really enthusiastic uh, for uh, for um, for them coming back. Sorry, I'm pretty tired actually. Uh, 
did my 1500 meter swim today, like I said, so yeah, um, don't know if there's anything I missed, but I've gone on for quite a long time here, so, oh yeah, I am, I am looking for a new bike, uh, if anyone's got any recommendations, I'm, I'm still kind of looking, I'm thinking maybe, you know, I should just borrow ETs, I might fly on that thing. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, on that note, I should probably um, finish. So, thank you for tuning in. Um, oh, no. Um, I also have got a half marathon coming up. So, I'm going to be up, up in my run training. So, ho hopefully, there'll be a few kind of running adventures and running stories for you to, for you to kind of indulge on. Um, yeah, so... Um, Thank you for tuning in, click subscribe, and yeah, until next time, adios amigos.